The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Mexico, the chilly capital of the world, known for clear skies, wide open spaces, and agriculture. Farming has been an important part of New Mexico's culture since before it became a state in 1912. The fertile soil, temperate climate, family tradition, all of these factors make New Mexico an attractive place for vegetable cultivation. But the moderate winters, especially in northern New Mexico, limit the growing season to only about six months, from May through October. Some small-scale farmers use greenhouses to grow crops over the winter months, but the high cost of building a greenhouse can be prohibitive for most growers. So here come cold frames to the rescue. Sometimes called hoop houses, cold frame greenhouses can extend the growing season up to 12 months for many crops allowing some of the hardier varieties to grow year-round. They cost only about a dollar per square foot to build or about $450 for a 480 square foot greenhouse. At that price, many small-scale farmers, as well as home gardeners, are utilizing cold frames to keep producing crops throughout the winter. In addition to being affordable and practical, cold frames are easy to build and cheap to maintain. Del Jimenez with New Mexico State University's Cooperative Extension Service is the resident expert in cold frame construction at the Alcalde Science Center in northern New Mexico. Jimenez and a group of local growers got together to build a new cold frame at the Science Center. This size of the greenhouse is going to be 17 foot wide and it's going to be 32 foot long. Now the length can be any length that you guys want it to be. Uh, but for the piece of land that we have over here, we're going to dictate it to 32, 32 feet. But uh, people will come up to me and say, well, I, I don't want something that long. I want it shorter. What can I do? Well, you can make it shorter, okay? And you make it shorter by just cutting off the segments of these pipes that you need over here. Well, we normally put these, these pipes in the frame uh, about in four-foot lengths, okay? So, so... Uh, the building is going to be 17 by 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, okay? The actual size of any finished cold frame can be designed to suit your own unique needs. Some of the important factors to consider in designing your cold frame include available space, desired crops, and budget. Jimenez worked out a materials list of just exactly what would be needed to construct this particular cold frame. Choosing the site for your greenhouse is another important factor to consider. The ground should be fairly level, with good drainage and fertile soil for growing. The site should be in an open area so trees or other obstacles can't block out the sun. And a north-south placement provides maximum sun penetration and ventilation. High winds and the chance for heavy snowfall are other concerns to factor in when choosing a site. Also consider the height of the cold frame for easy access and a comfortable workspace. If you want water or electricity in the greenhouse, location would be another key factor and think about how much security you'll need for your site. So let's build a greenhouse. First, Jimenez and crew cut the 20-foot PVC pipes into smaller sections to be assembled later. The 20-footers are cut into two 7.5-foot lengths, leaving a 5-foot piece for roof rafters and no waste. After the pieces are cut, start to assemble the uprights. Be sure the ends are clean so the glue will hold properly. What we're using here and what we're cutting here is two inch pipe. 
two inch plastic pipe. We have used one and a half inch plastic pipe. And I did have somebody make a one inch greenhouse at one time, okay? But they're too flimsy. The bigger the pipe, the more flexibility that we have in it, the more that it holds up. So, so a two inch is a really good pipe. You're talking about your winds down there. Two inch will hold up really good in the wind, okay? Now you prime the pipe and you also prime the joint. Yeah. Inside the joint. Do both of them. Yeah. These joints are about two inches in, okay? Inch and a half, two inches in. So we want to make sure that we get the primer at least, at least two inches out, okay? Now what we're all going to do is I want you all to get your coats on. We're going to go outside and we're going to start measuring. The next step is to lay out the chosen site. It's critical to first square off the corners of the building site. This structure will be 32 feet long and 17 feet wide. To calculate the hypotenuse or diagonal measurement, use the Pythagorean theorem. This comes out to 36 feet 3 inches. Squaring the corners ensures the rest of the process will go smoothly. The stakes go in next. Earlier in the day, Jimenez and Extension Fruit Specialist Dr. Ron Walser cut half-inch rebar into two-foot lengths to be used as stakes. First, place one stake in each of the four corners of the layout, pounding them halfway into the ground at a 30-degree angle pointing inward. Next, run a piece of string or rope on the outside of the four corners. Then drive stakes along the string line at four-foot intervals again about a foot deep at a 30 degree angle. Now it's time to put the assembled uprights in place. Simply set both ends over the angled rebar. With, your, with this part. <laughs> hey, you guys got your structure. What do you think of it, huh? Yeah. As you guys can see, this is pretty flimsy right here. Uh, so what we need to do is start bringing some stability into this thing. And we're going to do it by putting in three ribs. These tubular cross braces are made with three-quarter inch PVC pipe. The PVC comes in 10-foot pieces, so they need to be put together just like the frame pieces. Be sure the ends are clean, then prime and glue them together into 32-foot lengths. If you're planning on running a water line into the greenhouse, Connect the pieces with T fittings and make sure the T's face down. Make a mark every four feet on the tubular braces and attach them to the uprights at all three joints. Use conduit clamps and one inch screws to fasten the braces to the uprights. Start at one end and work your way to the opposite end until all the uprights are secured to the braces. This helps straighten, stabilize and strengthen the uprights. Baseboard installation is the next step in the process. The baseboards provide stability to the bottom of the uprights and also will be used to secure the plastic sheeting to the structure. 1x4s work best, but 2x4s will also work. Attach the boards together with short brace pieces, then screw them into the outside of the uprights where they meet the ground. Again, start at one end and work your way to the other end. After the baseboards are secured on both sides of the greenhouse, Drive a bent rebar stake into the ground between every other upright with the bend hooked on top of the baseboard. This will keep the structure anchored to the ground during high winds. Putting the heavy-duty polyethylene plastic cover on the cold frame is the next step. The clear plastic lets the sunlight in and keeps the inclement weather out. Roll it out on a flat surface near the structure so it can be measured and cut. This roll came in a 100-foot length, so it gets cut in half. Let the cut piece of plastic lay out in the sun for a while so it has time to warm up and get stretched out. Carry the plastic cover to the greenhouse and carefully stretch it over the top of the frame. But don't try doing this by yourself. Okay, now when you're putting on this plastic, like we said earlier, you have to do it on a calm day or, and, and with a lot of people because this thing can fly, okay? 
After the cover is draped completely over the frame, roll up any excess plastic and secure the plastic to the structure with inch-wide aluminum furring strips. Affix the plastic and strips to the baseboard with one-inch screws every foot or so, moving from one end to the other on both sides of the cold frame. Bury the excess plastic at the base of the structure. After the bottoms are done, Pull the plastic tight and sandwich the plastic between the aluminum strips and the outside uprights on both ends of the structure. Drill pilot holes into the pipe and put screws straight into the PVC, again going from one end to the other. We're almost done, but this cold frame isn't going anywhere. The final step will be to put doors on the two ends of the structure. The doors will provide not only access to the greenhouse, but also protect it from the elements, allow for the air to circulate, and can let cool air in if necessary. First, stretch a string across the front upright and find the center point. Make a mark along the string line two feet on each side of the center point. This is your four foot door opening. Dig the two holes about a foot deep for the door jam. Okay, Pam's going with them. Place a 2x4 post into each hole with the top angled at about 30 degrees to fit under the upright. Level the post in both directions and put a long screw through the aluminum strip and PVC upright into the post. Fill in the hole with dirt and pack it tightly. Now do the same with the other post, making sure they are 48 inches center to center. Now measure and cut bottom plates to run from the door jams to the edge of the uprights. Drill pilot holes from the bottom plate to the door jam and screw them together. Connect the bottom plate to the upright with another screw. Secure the plastic to the baseboards with the one inch aluminum strips the same way the sides were done. Trim away the excess plastic around the door jam. Of course you'll need access to your greenhouse, so it's time to hang the doors. Jimenez and crew built these doors earlier to fit a four-foot opening. Choose the best direction for opening the door and attach hinges on that side. Install a latch to keep the door closed tightly and locked if desired. Do the other doorway the same way and your cold frame greenhouse can be secured. The final step is to hold down the plastic on the roof with rope. Toss the rope over the top of the structure every other upright and tie it off to the side baseboards or stakes. Tying down the plastic will help keep it in place during strong winds and preserve the plastic. Your cold frame greenhouse is finished. This structure is a practical, low cost alternative to building a fully equipped greenhouse. Cold frames allow farmers to extend the growing season, which can help increase their income. They're easy to construct and maintain and can be designed and built to meet any land area, big or small. For more information on building cold frame greenhouses or other extension programs, contact your local extension office. The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.